Hello folks, in this tutorial series we're going to be making a tower defense game from scratch. This game will have all the typical features including multiple waves of enemies to defend against, different enemy types, as well as upgradable turrets. We're going to start by setting up a single enemy object that can move across a screen. Then I'll create manual waypoints and add in some AI to follow those waypoints from start to finish. After that, I will create a full game map with a path for the enemies to walk along using the free tile map editing software Tiled. We will set up turrets, add buttons and animations, and a lot more. All the code and assets will be linked in the video description. First, let's take a look at how the project is set up. You will need to make sure that you have installed Python and Pygame. You will also need an editor to type your code in. I use Sublime Text, but there are many other options to choose from. If you're not sure how to install Pygame or how to set up an editor, then I have a short video on getting started that you can check out first. Next, we'll look at the folder structure. I have a root folder for my game here, and inside it I've got my main.py, and constants.py files. There will be a few other files created as we go, but for now this is all that's needed. There's also an assets folder that contains all the images and sounds that we're going to use, as well as a levels folder that contains the data for our game map. We're not going to need these just yet, but it's good to understand how the project is laid out from the beginning. I'm going to hide this panel on the left so we have a bit more space. Now to start this project we need to import Pygame. And as a shorthand I'll import it as PG. This means that whenever I need to call a Pygame function, I can just type PG without having to type the whole thing. Next, we want to initialize the module. So I'll say in a comment, initialize Pygame, and I'll call PG.init. Now I can set up my game window. I'll add a comment to say create game window, and this is done by assigning it to a variable. So my game window is going to be assigned to variable screen, and I will make that equal to PG.display.set underscore mode. And within here, I need to pass in two variables, my width, of 500 pixels and my height of 500 pixels. I can run this code to test it and you'll see that something pops up for a second and then disappears again. The code is executing line by line so it initializes Pygame and then it creates the screen variable but then there's nothing to follow on afterwards. What I need is a way for the game to continue running until I close it down manually and to do that we will use a while loop. So a while loop will continue running as long as a condition is met. And this condition can be anything you like. So what we'll do is create a variable up here called run and set that variable to true. And then down here, I'll just say while run. And this means that as long as the run variable is true, this while loop is going to continue executing. So we'll just comment that to say game loop. If I was to run this game now, then we would go into this while loop and then get stuck inside it because there's nothing else there and there's no way to exit it. So the game would just hang up. What I need is a way of taking player input using the mouse and the keyboard to allow me to actually control this while loop. And that's going to be done with an event handler. I'll add a comment here to say event handler. Events in Pygame are added into an event queue and we can iterate through them with a for loop. I'm going to say for event in pg.event.get and for the time being, I only need one event, which will allow me to close the game down. So I'll add a comment to say quit program, and I will look for this specific event with an if statement. I'll say if event.type is equal to pygame or pg.quit, all in caps, then I can exit this while loop. Now the while loop, as we mentioned before, is contingent on this variable here being true. That means that to exit the while loop, I simply need to set this variable to false. So I can do that in here and I will exit the while loop for me. Lastly, once all of that is done and outside of this while loop, I'm going to just say pg.quit. So at the very beginning, we initialized Pygame with pg.init, and at the very end, we quit. If I run this now, I get my game window, and you'll see that it stays up, it didn't disappear like it did before. And now if I click up here, the game closes down. The next thing we'll do is limit the frame rate. This will mean that it will run the same speed regardless of how powerful the computer is. To do that, we need to do a couple of things. So I'll go at the top here, just underneath where I've initialized Pi came, and I will create the clock. And that's going to be assigned to a variable clock, which will be equal to pg.time.clock. Now inside my game loop, as the very first action, I want to call that clock variable and say dot tick at a frame rate of 60 frames per second, which is pretty standard for games. The setup is mostly complete, but we've manually entered some values into these fields. A tidier approach would be to find these as variables and then pass those variables into here instead. So we can do that up here. Since these are constants, meaning that they're not going to change throughout the game, the convention would be to use capitals to define them. We'll say screen underscore width 
is equal to 500 pixels and screen underscore height is also equal to 500 pixels and lastly the frame rate fps is limited to 60. now these are the same variables here and here so now i can just replace them i'll replace this with screen width and i can replace this one with screen height and likewise i can change this to fps but as the game grows then so will this list and that could become a little bit messy so that's where this constants.py file comes in what i'm going to do is cut these out from here and paste them into this file instead but now to be able to access these variables i need to make sure that i import the constants file into my main file at the top here i will say import constants and to give myself a shorthand i'll import them as c so now i can still use these variables as before but i have to add c dot at the beginning of them and with that done i can run the game again and everything works just as it did before so before we close this section out, there's one little thing that I want to update here. In the game window, it literally does just say Pi Game Window. So I'm going to change that to say Tower Defense. And we'll do that just after we create the screen. We'll say pg.display.set underscore caption. And in here we pass in the string that we want to appear instead. So in my case, I will call this Tower Defense. And if I run this again, you can see it's now replaced. 